It's that time of year, folks. QLED versus OLED 2021 edition. This time, featuring mini LED backlighting. Are you ready? I hope so, because we're about to do this thing. What do you think's gonna happen? Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and this has become something of a tradition around here, the annual comparison of a QLED TV versus OLED TV. This year, it's the Samsung QN90A QLED versus the LG C1 OLED and the stakes are higher this year because the Samsung is packing some mini LED backlighting heat which could change the game. We're gonna see about that. I'll cover design, connectivity, user interface, sound and picture performance, and of course gaming and we'll see which TV comes out on top in each of those categories then figure out which one might be right for you. And as always, we've got shopping links in the description below in case you want to support us that way. Okay, thanks. Let's get ready to rumble. Starting with design, we're looking at two very attractive TVs. Though if I'm honest, the C1 OLED has more shock factor with its ridiculously thin profile. The QN90A is also surprisingly thin and a no gap wall mount is also available. So either is gonna look great on a wall. I do need to point out that the Samsung QLED has a pretty effective anti-reflective coating on its screen, whereas the LG OLED can be a bit of a black mirror at times. So can't avoid having that bright room argument again, where already the Samsung has a leg up. Also, both TVs have a centralized stand, which is great, especially when you get into larger screen sizes where with other TVs, you have to be worried about how wide the legs might be. Advantage Samsung though, for providing a little more room for a soundbar if you stand mount. An extra advantage if you're getting a Samsung soundbar for reasons I'll cover shortly. As for connectivity, this is really about HDMI 2.1, right? The LG C1 has four HDMI 2.1 inputs and the Samsung QLED here has one. Do the math, more is better. Advantage LG if gaming is a big concern and we will talk about that soon. As for user experience, there's a lot to consider. Overall, I like LG's WebOS a little better than Samsung's Tizen. I'm not in love with either one, by the way, but LG gets a leg up here in gaming, which again, I'll talk about in a moment. Samsung has historically locked down new apps, sometimes exclusively before anyone else, but unless Nickelodeon Plus is about to drop and that's the only place you can watch SpongeBob for a year, I don't think you need to worry about that too much. I do want to take a look at the remotes though, because we have LG with the Magic Motion remote, which has lost a little of its magic for me, but at least it doesn't wobble anymore. But then there's Samsung coming in with a built-in rechargeable battery and solar panels on the back for recharging, which I have to admit is very cool. Until the non-replaceable battery dies on you and then it's a paperweight. So let's hope you replace your TV before the remote dies. Okay, what's next? Well, let me check my notes. Ah uh, yes, sound. So normally I don't spend a ton of time on sound, but it's worth it this time for sure. The LG C1 actually sounds great. I said it was perfectly decent in my review and I have to admit, I think I sold it a little bit short. I have been listening to this TV a lot lately and frankly, it sounds great. Way more bass than you're expecting and overall fidelity is quite impressive. Not as good as a decent soundbar setup, but then few TVs are. With the Samsung QN90A, I'm less enthusiastic with the TV sound, but it isn't bad like we've often heard with less expensive TVs. What's more important, I think, is the Samsung Symphony sound feature, which lets the Samsung soundbar and the TV speakers work together to create a pretty impressive soundstage. Plus, Samsung object tracking sound works pretty well sometimes. That's where sound objects seem to be coming from their location on the screen. But if we're judging the TVs on their own merits, advantage LG C1 OLED. Now for picture quality, and man, this is gonna be tough. Let's start with the obvious. The Samsung QN90A is brighter, like immediately noticeably brighter. It's no contest. If this was really a cage match on brightness alone, this would be a bloodbath. Sorry, I hope that's not too graphic. Anyway, the Samsung QN90A is pushing 2000 nits of peak brightness at its very best, and the LG C1 OLED is somewhere in the neighborhood of 750 nits. And even if you aren't a nit nerd, you can probably surmise that is a significant difference. Add that higher brightness to the anti-reflective nature of the QN90A's panel, and we are looking at a TV that is a clearly superior choice for brighter rooms. But sheer brightness power doesn't tell the whole story, especially for folks who watch later in the afternoon, evening, or at night. 
When the surrounding light is dimmer, the need for super high brightness starts to diminish. And in some cases, a super bright TV could actually be too much. Now, you could always tone the brightness down at night, but I can speak from personal experience that I hate having to adjust brightness based on the time of day I'm watching. The most important thing, though, is black levels. Because I can tell you right now, putting a top-notch mini LED set against an OLED, even though the mini LED set is controlling blooming and black levels better than any previous LED backlit set, the OLED owns pure black. And that has a huge implication on picture quality across the board. Contrast is the most important aspect of picture quality. And while the Samsung QLED dazzles with brightness, there's a richness that comes from OLED that mini LED still can't quite match. And I overall prefer the OLED. Hold up though, that's not the only consideration. When it comes to color, the Samsung Neo QLED is offering a higher color volume. And while it may not be as accurate in some ways, that is maybe not as true to creator's intent, it is a bit more striking at times. And that brings up a question that we can't answer in this video, but we have to talk about later. Is the creator's intent what the viewer, that's you, actually wants? And I think in a lot of cases, the answer may be no. Let's move on though. As far as halo effect or blooming is concerned, the Samsung QN98 does a great job at mitigating those things, as I pointed out in my review. Not perfect, but better than before. OLED is still better. As for off-axis viewing, if you're off to the side, the QN90A looks much better than most LCD displays, but it still doesn't match OLED. So where does that leave us on picture quality? I'd say the Samsung QN98 Neo QLED, can't forget that part, is going to appeal to the bigger audience. It's one of the best TVs I've seen from Samsung, and it's going to be the more practical choice for a lot of folks. My only concern is over how clean the panel is going to be. The unit I have here is very good, but as with all LCD TVs, there's some risk of dirty screen effect, whereas with OLED, that's far less common. The LG C1 OLED, meanwhile, still has its magic. It does things other TVs just can't, and for enthusiasts and for a lot of gamers, it is going to be a deeply satisfying TV. But I just said something I have to dig into a bit more, gaming. So what's up with that? The Samsung QN98 has an excellent input lag of under 10 milliseconds at 60 hertz and under 6 milliseconds at 120 hertz while in game mode. Plus, it's got great response time as well. Pair that with VRR support and excellent SDR and HDR imaging for games, and it's a great TV for gaming. It's just a shame about that one HDMI input if you have more than one next-gen console or a high-end gaming PC to connect. I do want to point out that the QN98's local dimming feature takes a little bit of a hit in game mode, so blacks will raise up into dark gray at times. With the C1 OLED, you get a response time of about 13 milliseconds at 60 hertz and just below 7 milliseconds at 120 hertz. The response time cannot be matched, one millisecond, so basically instantaneous. The TV supports both FreeSync and G-Sync, and it's got a cool game optimizer dashboard that makes some handy settings available. Now, with an OLED, super dark gaming scenes can be well, too dark because OLEDs don't come out of black very easily. But the C1 has a setting where you can intentionally raise the black levels to get better shadow detail at the expense of perfect blacks. It's not ideal, but as I just mentioned, you get roughly the same experience with the QN90A. Overall, the LG C1 is the better gaming TV, if only because it's got four HDMI 2.1 inputs and is therefore more flexible. So ultimately, which of these TVs wins is entirely up to your needs. I think the Samsung QN98 is undeniably a better Brightroom TV and has pretty strong performance in dark rooms thanks to its mini LED backlights and improved local dimming effect. It's got better off angle viewing than most other LCD TVs, but you still see more of the backlighting and get a little color shift when you aren't sitting dead center with the screen directly facing your face. The LG C1 can't compete as well in a bright room, but it still gets bright enough to pull off gorgeous HDR images thanks to its deep black levels. Colors are richer too, again, thanks to the black levels. I just think this TV is gonna be the best choice for movie lovers and TV enthusiasts in general. It's great for a movie room or a bedroom, and if your living room isn't too bright, it's gonna do well there too. It also happens to be one of the best gaming TVs you can buy. So again, the LG C series OLED ticking a lot of boxes. In the end, both TVs are extremely impressive and worth consideration. Personally, I would probably put the OLED in my own home. That's just what I like the best but you go with the one that sounds like it would be right for you. Thanks as always for watching everyone. Which TV would you pick of these two? Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And here's two other videos that I think you'll like.